Hi, everybody. Hi, this is Dr. Ken Mewich, Fibromyalgia Wellness Center. Uh, and uh, the uh, subject today is one of very, very interesting uh, information. It has to do with omega-3 fish oil, uh, and it's related uh, help to so many people with so many different conditions. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a few moments. But uh, first of all, I want to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, and that is uh, obviously fibromyalgia uh, was, has been a, a, a fight for <laughs> existence for decades. Let's put it that way. But actually, uh, as I mentioned to you historically, it goes all the way back to biblical times. Uh, and uh, not until really 1990, uh, when uh, the American College of Rheumatology uh, actually published its paper uh, that actually named and was really specific as far as many of the inf uh, bits of information that we have on fibromyalgia today. Uh, when it first came out, however, uh, there was, a, uh, through the American Medical Association, a lot of doctors uh, that to this day do not believe that there is such a condition as fibromyalgia, even though uh, there's codes for it, medical codes and so forth, but uh, there's a lot of doubters out there. And the doubters uh, are because it does not fit, and I've mentioned this before, it doesn't fit their training protocol. Their training protocol uh, for doctors, allopaths, MDs, DOs, nurses, so forth and so on, it involves the uh, use of objective testing. Objective tests now are different from when a patient comes in and talks to you about their subjective symptoms. Objective tests are those that they usually send you out for, blood chem, urinalysis, CBC, MRI, CTs, all these. Now, you know, as a fibromyalgia patient, that most of these come back negative. Uh, if they do come back neg positive, excuse me, it's because of secondary conditions. And as I've mentioned in the past, every fibromyalgia patient has secondary conditions. It's not a surprise, it's what it is. Uh, whether it be osteoarthritis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, you name it. There's 15 different ones that I've talked about it before, and I'll go over it with you again eventually. Uh, but if you want to go look back, I've saved every one of these. This is number 79, number 79 live video that I've given you information on fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia-related conditions, other conditions, so forth. So this is not just on fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia, but keep in mind, if you have fibromyalgia, you have other conditions. Now, the problem is... And in 1990, one of the major researchers in that study was a Dr. Eunice from the University of, Ari uh, excuse me, University of Illinois. And when the AMA came out, a lot of doctors uh, that were really negating his studies, and he wasn't alone. There were a number of people that actually worked on the research itself. Uh, but what happened was that uh, a lot of doctors came out in a negative tone. Uh, it's, uh, they didn't believe that there was such a thing as fibromyalgia and on and on and on. So he wrote a letter. He wrote a, a, a piece and sent it in uh, and it was published. And what he said was, shame on you doctors for being so, uh, so tunnel vision in uh, not understanding that our future will hold many new conditions that we have no answer for. We have no objective tests validating these. And yet you are at this point saying that unless it fits into our studies, then it doesn't make any difference. There's no such thing as another new condition, so to speak. Well, it's coming upon us now. It's coming upon us in a much scarier type of situation. I've had patients come in uh, that have had conditions. We send them out for every possible test uh, and it doesn't actually uh, form or fit into anything. It's not fibromyalgia, but there are other conditions out there that are uh, falling into this similar plane of fibromyalgia. One of them is uh, the stiff back syndrome, where uh, the person, uh, in a, I've got a couple patients that are in, and they vary in age. Usually it's not initially, it's when they're in their 40s, maybe 50s, where uh, all the tests that run, Nothing seems to be positive on them, and yet they can hardly move. Their stiffness and pain and aches and so forth. Now, uh, uh, when I work with them as far as chiropractic and the physical therapy, rehab, so forth and so on, it helps them somewhat, but they come back in a couple of days and then they come back with the same pain or it might last for a short period of time. Uh, they don't have really 
uh, osteoarthritis uh, or a lot of degeneration. It's just the fact that they have a lot of pain uh, in their spine and they have a difficult time actually moving. So that's, this is another condition. Another one that's even more difficult uh, to diagnose uh, it actually falls on the shoulders of children, I'm so sorry to say. Uh, somewhere between the ages of five and maybe 15, 16. Uh, and I wanna make sure I get the name of this correctly. Uh, it's uh, acute flaccid, uh, acute flaccid myelitis, acute flaccid myelitis, where there's uh, actually uh, pain and stiffness in the arms and legs, uh, and it actually mimics, uh, believe it or not, polio, but it is not polio. Uh, it's a neurological virus disease, apparently. There's 570 confirmed cases in the United States right now. Uh, and it usually shows up uh, seasonal, uh, usually summer and fall, uh, but uh, it goes away, not the, the symptoms, but uh, the condition actually then disappears for a couple of years, then comes back again. And it's primarily children. Uh, and uh, it's very, very difficult uh, to diagnose because again, no objective tests are validating this. And so uh, I, I have a, a stepson, uh, step, sorry, I have a, a step nephew that has come down with this. And even with the, uh, the best of uh, children's medical hospitals in Phoenix, uh, they've been unable to diagnose his condition properly, but it appears to be of such that it is this uh, acute flaccid uh, myelitis that uh, the individual, it's under AFM. Uh, that's what it's usually called under. So if you have something children-wise and uh, they're having a difficult time, they're getting weak, uh, achy, sore, they have a difficult time walking, presently he's going to school in a wheelchair. Uh, uh, and uh, yet uh, uh, the doctor is he's meeting with three different neuro, uh, neurologists right now, uh, but there's no answer for this, I'm so sorry to say. Uh, so fibromyalgia, you're going through the same thing that some of these new conditions, because doctors... Many uh, have a tunnel vision, uh, and unless it falls under uh, normal objective testing, they are having a difficult time diagnosing these things. Don't give up. Make sure you keep working and looking through uh, Google and various different things to check and make sure that you follow up as parents and grandparents and so forth to help these individuals to find out exactly what their problem is so at least we can start the treatment on it. So with that in mind, and the reason why I bring that out again is that fibromyalgia has been fighting for years. I mentioned to you, it goes all the way back to biblical times, and yet doctors just did not accept, or, or and even till today, many have still not accepted fibromyalgia. What a shame. What, a, what an embarrassing shame for our, our health system. Uh, and yet, those of you that have it, you know you have it, and we're going to try to find and do everything we can to help you. Uh, we've been working, like I say, I work with an MD out of California, uh, and he's a researcher out of UCLA, and he's close to 90, has fibromyalgia, he's still working full-time, and our protocol is exceptionally um, successful for those people that stay on it. It's one of those things like a diabetic. If you don't stay on it, then you're, you're not going to be successful, uh, and that's very, very difficult for people. So today... I want to talk to you a little bit about, and if it runs over into next week, don't worry about it. It's omega-3, fish oil, okay? You've heard it before. You've heard all about this. Look, the, the benefits of fish oil are not produced by the body. It's something that you have to actually ingest, believe it or not. Uh, and the two aspects of, of uh, the omega-3 are something called eicosapentaenoic acid and decosahexaenoic acid, EPA and DHA. Now, you have omega-3, 6, and 9. Not to confuse you, but omega-9 is extra virgin olive oil, okay? It's an uh, antioxidant. It's excellent. You should be cooking and eating that. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, all of us need antioxidants to neutralize a lot of the garbage that comes into our system, not only from the air we breathe, the water we drink, but also all of the foods, the GMOs and everything else that uh, we're, we're ingesting that only the good, no, good Lord knows what we're actually ingesting nowadays. Uh, but uh, omega-9... Uh, like I say, extra virgin olive oil. Omega-6 is trans fatty acids, okay? Uh, they're not the good things. Uh, they're the hydrogenated oils, the vegetable oils, saturated fats. What they do, omega-6, is they stimulate in your brain something called arachidonic acid. 
Arachidonic acid then produces PGE2. PGE2 prostaglandins is your primary source of inflammation and pain in the body. Wait a minute. So I'm ingesting foods that are actually causing inflammation in my body? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Trans fatty acids are most of the things that you find on a shelf uh, and most of the meats, uh, beef and pork and so forth that you eat, okay? Now, in, in the, uh, the early days, <laughs> the Stone Age, uh, all, of the, uh, all of the animals were omega-3. Not until we started feeding them our own grains and so forth did they actually change to omega-6 trans fatty acids. And I think it has a shelf life, okay? All those things that are in packages, all those donuts and cakes and cookies and candies, they have trans fatty acids added to them to allow them actually to stay on a shelf for an extended period of time. That's what trans fatty acids do, okay? So how, what are you going to do to counteract that? Well, omega-3 is essential fatty acids, okay? They, they must be ingested, however. They're not automatically produced by the body. They're the best fats, and they're found in fish and fish oil. Flaxseed oil produces ALA, which really is too difficult for it to, uh, to be processed. Only about 10% of all flaxseed oils and so forth uh, actually are, are produced into your body as positive uh, fish oil processing. So they're the smart fats in the body, the omega-3s. Uh, and you have to understand, omega-3s are very, very important because 60% of our brain is actually omega-3 fats, believe it or not. So we're going to get into some of these other things as we go along, but it's very, very important that you understand how important fish oil is. And again, it must be ingested for you to get into your system, all right? So I think we've covered some of these things. But one thing is very, very important is, again, we're going to go back to omega-6s and omega-3s. The, po the positive ratio should be no more than three to one trans fatty acids to omega-3, omega-6 to omega-3. In our United States, in our America, the average is 15 to 17 to one trans fatty acids to actually omega-3, which means that we are on fire, okay? We're an inflammatory <laughs> furnace. Uh, and that's why we're having so many problems. You know, we have a little bit of osteoarthritis that turns into a big thing, okay, because of inflammation. You know, Time Magazine had on, a, uh, on its cover, oh, I, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, and I, I kept it, I should, I should have it right on hand, uh, about inflammation being the key source of, of problems that we have in the body. When you have a, a health problem, inflammation comes up, whether it be heart, heart disease or, or you name it, all of these things are inflammatory, all right? So... One of the main things is dietary. You're going to have to cut down your trans fatty acids and you're going to have to start increasing your fish oils, all right? Uh, or eating, eating fish. Now, this is interesting. If you ate fish 365 days, three times a day, you still wouldn't be able to ingest enough of the omega-3 in your body to actually help you properly, okay? And, and so what you have to do is you have to actually add omega-3 to your diet by way of not only fish, but also supplements. Now, there's a lot of omega-3s out there. We use uh, uh, one from a very leading company. It's called Zymogen. Most of the people can't get that. It's usually uh, from uh, produced for doctors and so forth. But uh, it's the purity. It's the purity aspect of it. You know, there's a lot of different omega-3s out there. And uh, the interesting thing about it is that uh, it takes 100 pounds of fish oil out of 1,000 pounds of fish oil that are pure. They don't throw the other 900 pounds away, okay? They sell them to secondary producers. So you have like an A, B, C, D rating, okay? The nice thing about it is that the pure 100% omega-3s are not that much more expensive than those that are lower level, okay? So what we're talking about is taking all of the chemicals out of fish oil, all right, that are secondary, so not gonna add on to your problems, and so that you can ingest it properly, uh, and uh, get the full benefits, all right? That's the most important thing. And uh, that's what we use. We use 100% use pure omega-3. Again, it takes 1,000 pounds of fish oil to produce 100 pounds pure. And again, the secondary ones are usually sold on the market for cheaper brands and so forth and so on. So you need to know from your doctor which ones are really uh, purest, uh, the ones that you will have benefits from of the highest value. So there's two parts of fish oil that you need to know a little bit about. Oh, I'm past my point. 
So we're going to continue on this next time. But the two areas that uh, are of extreme importance uh, on fish oil or in fish oil are something called EPA and DHA. The EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, okay, is the anti-inflammatory. It blocks the brain from producing arachidonic acid, which then stops producing PGE2, which is your uh, chief source of pain and inflammation in the body. Isn't that great? That's fantastic, isn't it? It actually blocks the brain from do producing that, eicosapentaenoic acid. The other one is decosahexanoic acid, DHA, decosahexanoic acid. That is a brain stimulant. We're going to get into that in much more detail. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the EPA uh, in itself. There are so many great benefits of fish oil uh, that we're going to cover, uh, but uh, the EPA uh, aspect is really, really important. But, and this is a very big B-U-T, but you have to take the correct amount for it to work. Now, uh, the, uh, uh, in America, they say that uh, you shouldn't go over 3,000 milligrams of EPA. Uh, Europe says you shouldn't go over 5,000. The actual studies that have been made are that you have to take at least 3,000 milligrams of fish oil EPA, okay, for it to work pos <laughs> in a positive sense, okay? 3,000 milligrams of EPA. If you take that much, you usually will take the same of the amount that you need, not the same, but the correct amount for the DHA, for the brain stimulant, okay? But the EPA portion, minimum of 3,000. How do you know? Well, you just take the bottle, whatever you have, okay, and you look at it on the back. If it doesn't have EPA and DHA on it, go and find another one, okay, because fish oil has those. Those are the two main ingredients that you need to know about. And the vast majority of the good ones that I know of have both EPA and DHA on there. And you look at it, and it says, it might say 500 milligrams, okay? But then you look and see serving size. Is it for one pill or is it for two pills or more? If it's for one pill, guess what? To get to the 3,000 level, you have to take six of them, okay? I know that seems like a lot, but the pills are a lot smaller. They're more like by pearls. In the past, years ago when we were working with it, they looked like horse pills. Now, they look like pearls. It's not any big deal. You can take them all at one time. You can take two, 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 three, two, whatever, one, six times a day, whatever. I take mine in the morning. I've been taking mine, and the family's been taking the correct amount for years, okay? And the benefits have been fantastic, and I'll talk about that next time as we go along. But you have to take a minimum of 3,000 milligrams of the EPA, and that usually covers the DHA, which we're going to talk about next time, okay? Uh, when we uh, get together, and that's next Monday at 12.30 Arizona time. Uh, right now I'm in, believe it or not, in, in Erie, Colorado. Uh, family members having uh, anniversary and birthdays, and so I'm up here celebrating with them, uh, with family. Uh, and uh, just having a wonderful time. Uh, I've, I've done presentations in a variety of different places. I was in Colorado one other time, same family, uh, for a, a, a party. <laughs> uh, and I also was in Flagstaff during a snowstorm. So, hey, look, as long as I have my, my, uh, <laughs> my phone uh, and I can go live, uh, I'll be doing presentations for you, okay? Uh, but... Uh, next time, we're going to go into more detail on omega-3 and how it's beneficial for you. Look, not just fibromyalgia we're talking about here, okay? It's very, very important to take it for fibromyalgia. People say, well, I'm allergic to fish. For the most part, they've taken that chemical out of the fish so that it, it should not adversely affect you. Should not have to belch, should not have to do all these different things and so forth, okay? Especially those companies that produce the purest fashion in itself. Okay, I know because I've had to go through that with patients, but now uh, that benefit, uh, that negative, so to speak, is now a benefit, so you can actually take the fish oil. And no matter how much fish you eat, you can't get enough into your system to have it work properly. This is no such thing as one-a-day vitamins, okay? You have to take the amount that works for you if you want to have the benefits for it. So next time, next Monday, we're going to continue with omega-3. 
Uh, I'm going to spend uh, some time on EPA and also the DHA and all the research that has been on, on omega-3, which is uh, almost uh, daily and weekly. They're, they're doing more and more tests. I want to thank each and every one of you. Lots of love and blessings and so forth. Don't give up if you have a condition. There's answers for everything. Uh, especially fibromyalgia and all of the other related conditions and so forth to go along with it. Uh, and thank you very, very much. Uh, thank, thank you, Nancy. Thank everybody for joining. Uh, and look, invite your family and friends. This information is all research valid and it's clinically proven because I use it in my clinic each and every time. And so take care. Hope all is well. Uh, and uh, lots of love and blessing to everybody. Bye-bye now. Nancy, I'll get on with you in just a moment.